Hi, my name is Dr. Jeffrey Terrell from the University of Michigan. I'm an otolaryngologist, and uh, I've been working with Cure HHT to bring you this app in conjunction with the folks at Arbor Moon Technologies, Arbor Moon Company in Ann Arbor, who built the app for us. So today, this is going to be a quick start guide to the app. Many of you are facile already with iOS apps, but we thought that a quick start guide would be good. I should definitely note that there is a longer video that gives great detail how to use this app for those folks that want to go in greater detail. I have just loaded down, downloaded the My HHC Tracker from the iOS web store and uh, you'll see when you log in first you'll have a chance to look at what is HHT or read a little bit about what is HHT. Uh, the, uh, there are two pages here. You can swipe from left to right to see those and read that material. But uh, again, this is a very quick start guide to my HHT tracker. Um, I'm going to say I'm new to the app and, um, and, uh, I could also, um, if I was uh, I just got a brand new phone, I could hit this import backup data, which I had saved in an email, but I'm new to the app. I'm going to read and understand the agreement that this is really not to giving you individual medical advice, but it's uh, general advice that I think most people need to uh, be aware of uh, for the most part uh, at some point in their lives, perhaps. So I'm going to understand that and I'm going to put my name in there um, and um, I'll, I'll uh, also put in some basic uh, sample data. I'm a male. I'll leave January 1st, 1980, although I'm a little bit older than that. And now I'm going to decide that I want to track my uh, bleed at an interval. There, Most of you will do an interval, say, let me just, you know, let me track my bleed um, uh, every uh, month or so. So, um, and you, but you can change the interval. Occasionally, there'll be a, a few people that might be on a study, let's say, and they'll want to track the, every single nosebleed every day. Um, but I think the majority of people will check, click here. So I'm going to do that. Uh, I can also actually, before I do that, I can click on the top and set up my team. So I can put my primary cage, HHT to do, doctor there, HHC uh, doctor. And I could put an email address for that person, HHT doc at gmail.com. Let's say it's fake, fake. Uh, email address, but we'll do that. And I, I could also put uh, my other providers there and their contact information, of course. Uh, good idea. You can also, uh, on the top right, add other doctors. If you have other specialists that aren't on our pre-populated list, you can add other specialists. Um, and so the next thing I do is the interview. And this is, I think, quite uh, valuable. Uh, I'm going to answer these questions. And based on how I answer these uh, uh, 15 or so questions, 20 questions, I'm going to get an email summarizing my information. So let's say I, uh, I do have HHT. Let's say, for instance, uh, I don't know uh, what my genetic mutation is. So I'm going to leave that blank. Um, in terms of this question about pulmonary AVMs, I do have pulmonary AVMs. I've had them embolized. I don't have any brain vascular malformations or treatments. Uh, I do have some GI bleeding. Uh, and I've had a little anemia. So I'm just going to go ahead and just populate this um, and not take a lot of time uh, because after I populate these questions, um, I'm going to uh, finish the interview and I will be sent a summary of things I need to know based on the answers to these questions. So it's nice to keep that summary and go back to read it, but a lot of the material is going to be further on the app if you need to find it again. So there, there it is. Uh, and I, I said that the email was going to be sent to myself. Again, I can get a reminder, or not again, I can uh, select the time that I want to um, get my reminder about my no about nosebleeds. I can swipe from one side to the other uh, to uh, get these, uh, get this information. So um, I, I'll set up a time uh, to get uh, my nosebleed reminders, or I can turn off the nosebleed reminder. I can also get reminders about medical tests that are coming up. So I can say for tests and procedures that I need on a regular interval, how long before the next test date should I have a reminder? And the second button, once it's scheduled, how far in advance of that date do I want another reminder? And then the final thing is backup, backing up your data. We do recommend that uh, you back up your data. If the phone should break or crash completely, and every couple of weeks you've uh, backed up your data, like you can see here, uh, then um, you'll be able to restore for the backup. This sends a backup of your data to your email address because Apple won't let us send uh, health information uh, through the uh, Apple uh, devices and software 
uh, to your computer. So you'll need to back up uh, by sending things to your email. And of course, that's at your discretion. Now I'm going to hit done. And um, you can see the email that I was going to send um, to myself if I had put uh, my email address on there. Um, I could do that. So this is um, emailing from myself, and I would email to myself if I had set that email address in there uh, properly. This is a, a, um, information uh, from uh, the questionnaire, and it tells me, let's hear family history. Um, I'll, I'll go back to uh, one a little further down. Uh, question you answered, have you had known pulmonary AVMs embolized? And, and so there's some information there in that email that will be sent. So I'm going to uh, delete the draft of the email rather than send it. And now I'm back into the app. Um, you'll be here now on the dashboard. Uh, you can see that I have set up nosebleed data on the top uh, left-hand side. And I've populated nosebleed data for several months. As you go through here, you'll see I've populated data. Uh, I can also, at this point, uh, decide about test schedules. So we know that patients with HHT uh, get tests done, and it'd be nice to set up reminders. So on the left, you see when the last blood test was that was entered, and then you can also set up the frequency by which you need at which you need those tests done, and you can also uh, put the date of the next test. You also by this little red bell, you can set a reminder to yourself so you'll be reminded about those uh, tests. Uh, so you can play around with this and see how it works. Nosebleed data. Uh, you may recall that we have set up Nosebleed data using the profile on the top right-hand side. There's a profile button. I'll click on that now. And I have set to it to track every track an interval. And I've chosen one-month intervals, which I think the majority of you are going to do. So I'll save that. And I'm going to go back a month and pick uh, an interval for which I'd like to uh, record a Nosebleed. So I'll go back to March. I'm going to hit the 30th of March, and it's going to, and populate uh, that I had fairly bad nosebleeds then. Once a day, lasting 16 minutes, and some of those were actually gushers. And I'm going to save that now. And it populates uh, in in uh, March uh, and um, to the end of to the end of the month. I may want to populate from March uh, 1st to 29th because I'm populating monthly data again several times per week, six 15 minutes. Gushers, I'll save those. That populates the rest of the month. So uh, this is uh, doing it by intervals, by monthly intervals. The next thing I want to show you is data and tests. I have uh, entered some data and tests. Blood loss data, of course, is in there. You can see on the right, I entered some uh, data on October 1st. You can click on that line to see what I've entered. Um, but I'm going to say I want to enter more data. So I've already done a bunch of data already. The most common thing you guys are going to want to do is probably lab data. So I'll hit to enter those lab data. I'll put in three numbers. Uh, and I'm going to scroll way back to, um, let's say, April or something, uh, maybe the middle of April. I'll put a hemoglobin number of uh, 5, uh, ferritin level, very low. Uh, say that someone's having nosebleeds of 12. Oxygen saturation was maybe a little low when I was in the office. And um, and then I'll maybe put in a BNP, which most of you won't do, uh, but that's for patients that might have uh, problems with congestive heart failure related to um, HHT or other, or other issues with their heart. So I'll now I'll just t click the top right to save that data, and um, and it's in the it'll be real at the bottom because remember it was April. Now you can enter other test data. This is just a quick start guide. Again, there's a much longer video to show you uh, things in greater detail if you're not really facile with iOS apps. But you can put uh, enter imaging. Here you just put like your chest CT scan, and if I were to hit the upload button, I'd be given an opportunity to go to my camera roll and and add that picture. It can only be one page, uh, so if you got two pages in a paper report you want to take a picture of, lay them out side by side. And then you would just upload that and you'd uh, hit that little button and save. So you can enter any type of test if you like. Uh, you can see here, and uh, I won't go into that. That's pretty intuitive as well. So that's the data and tests. Um, you can add procedures or interventions, what I think is important to recognize. I, one of the studies I added a collation a date. Again, you can change the date if you want here at the top. Just scroll with your finger across the top. Rather than touch day by day, day you can, you can uh, rub across the top to change uh, very, uh, very quickly. I've already entered some data for that, so I'm not going to show that to you. So now I'm back at the data and tests. 
Don't forget on the top right hand side, you can hit the share button. I have not entered a lot of doctor's names, so uh, this comes up as an error. Uh, but you can share this with yourself and your doctor and send the data. You can also, as you're sharing the data, you can set a filter so that you uh, only share certain data uh, with um, your doctors and see you can click the data, different types of data that you want to share by clicking those buttons, as well as at the bottom, you can share all the data, three months, one year, or six months. Um, so you probably don't want to send all your nosebleed data for every single day to your doctor, but we'll see. You can also filter the data so that you only want to see certain things. I only want to see my lab data. I can get rid of the other data so I can uh, just see the lab data. And if I were to open up a test, I can see what those uh, data uh, showed for that time. Um, I wanted to show you the charting feature because I think it's quite cool. Um, this You can select a test to chart. I have populated different data. So let's say I populated my hemoglobin. You can see my hemoglobin in June on the left side started uh, quite low, around 5. Uh, there was intervention. By clicking this little red dot at the bottom, you can see my intervention was coblation treatment then. And then in August, I had endoscopy with coagulation. And you can see how my hemoglobin went up. I can look at other things. I can look at my ESS score and see how my score has changed over time. Um, and so uh, that uh, is, is good. The higher score is worse than the lower score is, is better. I can change the interval if I want to see things as well. So you can see how when I did the coblation, my ESS score went down over time because I'm getting less nosebleeds. Um, and then you can also see your iron level. Again, kind of cool to see that when you had some sort of treatment done, your iron level after that went up and you can make the association between the intervention and the results. So charts are pretty cool. You can chart other things. You can chart your BNP level if, if uh, one has congestive heart failure. And then um, the FAQs, frequently asked questions and other resources. Top left is the HHC website. Uh, then the second icon talks about this app. The third icon, icon talks a little bit about what is HHT. And the fourth, of course, links to our Facebook site for Cure HHT or the Facebook site for Cure HHT. I think it's really important that you also read through these different topics if they apply to you or if you're interested. There's a lot of information uh, about any particular topic. I opened liver AVMs and just a quick resource guide. Frankly, some of your doctors, your general doctors, may not see patients with HHT. It may be interesting for the doctors to download this. Um, I, as an ear, nose, and throat surgeon and a surgeon in general, I think it's important that your surgeons and anesthesiologists, for instance, know about HHT. And there's some information that you can share with them. Thank you. We hope you find this video and certainly the app helpful and that you will share it with your friends and family and the HHT community.